All living things depend on the sun. Plants need sunlight to grow. Animals, including humans, need plants for food and the oxygen they produce. Without heat from the sun, Earth would freeze. There will be no winds, ocean currents, or clouds to transport water. Here on Earth, the sun is one of the most important sources of energy. Deep in the core of our local star, hydrogen atoms react by nuclear fusion, producing a massive amount of energy that streams in all directions at the speed of light, more than 186,000 miles per second. In just 8 minutes, that energy travels 93 million miles to Earth. The law of conservation of energy says that energy can't be created or destroyed, but can change its form. And that's what happens with energy from the sun. It changes into lots of different forms. By combining modern day technology and sunlight, the production of solar energy has become a possibility. First, let us examine the science behind how solar panels convert solar energy to electrical energy. Solar panels are made up of smaller units called solar cells. The most common solar cells are made from silicon, a semiconductor that is produced from sand, which is the second most abundant element on Earth. In a solar cell, crystalline silicon is sandwiched between conductive layers. Each silicon atom is connected to its neighbors by four strong bonds, which keep the electrons in space so no current can flow. Therefore, to make electrons flow, a silicon solar cell uses two different layers of silicon. An N-type silicon has extra electrons, while a P-type silicon has extra spaces for electrons, which is called holes. Hence, when these two types of silicon are connected together, electrons can wander across the P-N junction, leaving a positive charge on one side and creating a negative charge on the other side. Now, you can think of light as the flow of tiny particles called photons which shoots out from the sun. When one of these photons strikes the silicon cell with enough energy, it can knock an electron from its bond, leaving a hole. Hence, the negatively charged electron and location of the positively charged hole are now free to move around randomly. But because of the electric field at the P-N junction, they'll only go in one direction, which we want to produce electricity. So now, the electron is drawn to the N side while the hole will be drawn to the P side. Then, the mobile electrons are collected by thin metal fingers at the top of the cell. From there, they will flow through an external circuit, doing electrical work such as powering a DC motor in our case, before returning through the conductive aluminium sheet on the back. First, you'll need a cardboard for the base of the car. Second, you will need four beads to hold the axle, two cylindrical objects, a few rubber bands, two long sewing needles as the wheel axle, a standard small solar panel, a DC motor, a switch, and lastly, four bottle caps as the wheels of the car. You'll need glue gun to glue everything in place. So first, you just uh, glue this to the end. It's gonna be like the wheel. Beads. You put it in. And then, you put another bead in. So it's gonna be like two. And you stick it to the... You stick it to the cardboard like that. It would be better to do this so that we could ensure the beads are aligned, which is important to maintain a smooth turn of the wheel. Let them spin. So I'll just have to glue another one in the other edge. Take the other bead and glue it here. And I'll put the other one in here. Just make sure it's aligned. You can see it's like aligned. So I'll just glue this like this, and I'll just put it in. There we have I'll do it so I like it. So I'll put it in. So it's going to be like And the last one. So we are done with the wheel arrangement. So now we have the dynamo. And you just get any like just stick it together. So it spins. Afterwards I attach the motor to the car. Now that the base is done, all we have to do is just attach the solar panel and finish off the design. So now you can see how the pulley arrangement works. It allows us to transfer the rotation of the DC motor to rotate the wheel and hence move the car. The next step involves soldering the wire to the back of the solar panel because it didn't come with any connected wire. So this is the complete circuit. 
this is the solar panel and then it goes here and it goes to the switch so I can turn it off and on whenever I want like so the wheels so this thing doesn't always spin all the time right and this is the dynamo and then there's the background it goes here to here so yeah it's a complete circuit now for the last step all we need to do is just mount the complete circuit on the car It wouldn't work, but if I put this thing out, it spins. Yes, I ended up testing it out, but still it didn't work. This time I got rid of the pulley concept and I wanted to connect the wheel directly to the DC motor. However, it still wouldn't move because it, I think it was too heavy. For the final attempt, I restarted everything from scratch and this time I used plastic gears instead. So first, I glued a gear to just one of the wheels. So now you can see that we have 4 wheels and one of them has 1 gear. Next, I glued another plastic gear to the DC motor. Yeah. No. And lastly, I just had to assemble the whole circuit back on the board. So from here you can see how the gear works. As the plastic gear on the DC motor moves, it will cause the plastic gear on the wheels to move also. It's moving. It's moving. It's on. So you can see it's moving. Okay. I'm not spinning it, it's moving by itself. Essentially how it works is this the solar cell converts sunlight energy um, to electrical energy to power the motor so then when the motor turns the gear will also turn and then there's also another gear inside here. So then the whole thing turns. On. And I turn it off. And I turn it off. And I turn it off. See, it moves again. And I turn it off.